Oh, my goodness me. I am so delighted to introduce to you <laughs> a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful person. And she broadcasts on BBC Three Counties Radio. Um, she does not represent the BBC, I should mention that. And a wonderful, wonderful warm, warm welcome to Fazana Shudri. Is that how you pronounce Fantastic. your last name? Fantastic. Thank you so much. An honor and a privilege to join it's you. Wonderful to have you. And I'm I'm delighted to have you here, Fazana. Um, why don't we talk about anything and everything that we can. Watford fans, both of us, which is really good. Uh, I think you have some apparel and attire I need, somewhere. I need a prop, yeah, I need a prop, need a prop. <laughs> <laughs> we normally it's, have a Zoom call after watching the um, the matches yeah. on Hive. Um, we have a Zoom call between about a dozen of us. Um, and that's really, really just therapy after the game. At the moment it is therapy or it's like a bit of a victory. And then if it's a victory, then we have a celebration photo. So yeah, it's just capturing the moment, trying to do as best as we can in these uh, right. in these moments. Oh, oh gosh. I, how do you feel about Watford right now? I, I'm just, well, why don't you tell me how you feel first? <laughs> how do I feel? Oh my goodness. How do I feel? How do I feel? There's obviously something missing, isn't there? That, you know, with a squad like we've got, I know we're only fifth and it seems really ungrateful to be whinging and whining and you don't want to come across as a Spurs fan at all. But gosh, with the talent that we've got, we should be whipping everyone. And yeah, we're fifth, but I don't feel that joy because I think, my goodness, you know, we, we should not be fifth with the way that we've been playing. Um, so I feel frustrated. I feel really frustrated. Um, Cisco, oh my goodness, I just have bad vibes for Cisco. Poor Cisco. What's going to happen after after the match on um, on Saturday? I think he's probably got a, a kind of like an axe swinging against his head. But you can't do that. You can't keep changing the manager. There's no stability. You've got to have that. Um, I don't know. It's just the team gelling together. That culture, you know, that that culture's got to be really strong. Even if you're bringing in new players, you've got to have a core, strong structure. And something's missing. Clearly, something's missing. They're playing for Watford. I want to see them running and puffing and panting their little socks off. Where's the passion? Where's the joy? Don't even start me on Andre Gray. Don't even start me on him. When I see him running around with 18 on the back of his shirt, which is how much we paid for him, 18 million, I'm just I'm wound up every single time I watch him play. So, uh, yeah, it's... It's not brilliant at the moment, is it, watching them? Let's face it. Definitely not. Definitely not. And I, I, I don't want to lead you down the, the gray path, but I, I feel the same way you do about him. And perhaps even more so about the way management and the board are behaving around him and enabling him. And he's not producing a thing. Exactly. Nothing. Exactly. Yeah. And he's, yeah. he's had more lockdown breaches than he scored goals this season I mean it's it's shameful it's absolutely shameful um it, you know just like a churlish spoilt child uh, yes you're in the championship um and that's that's the team's fault that's your collective fault we're in the championship but help us help us to get out of it yeah yeah he's been abysmal he, he really has and I think the less said about him <laughs> the better yeah because. exactly 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 <laughs> but it's it just winds me up seeing that 18 just really winds me up so uh yeah 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 let's move on <laughs> <laughs> now when, when you and i corresponded <laughs> it's just so good to see you because we just had a right old ding dong laughing it up and, and having fun on on dms and everything yeah, um <laughs> Two Brits like us having a laugh, talking about all these things that are going on around us. And I remember when we spoke, we talked about the inauguration and you mentioned Amanda Gorman. And I had some concerns um, about her. Um, she's wonderful, brilliant, just ahead of her time. Yeah, yeah. But there's this American cultural industry yeah that sinks yeah. its claws into exactly, you exactly exactly and and you know what the the grown-up kind of maternal instinct in me just wants to protect her just just want, wants to protect her and I'm sure she has a, and she does she has a really strong mother etc but it's that um I don't know I mean we have that culture over here you kind of bring them up and then you you destroy them and and this is it I mean she's got global acclaim and where do you go from here that's the really scary scary thing um and I do I kind of like fear for her a little bit in in, in that respect um and and just how do you stay grounded as well 
um, when you have that level of exposure at such a young age as well. So uh, yeah, just um, joy, absolutely joy um, that she has a voice, that she was so articulate. Um, but yeah, just, the, just that little bit of kind of deep rooted kind of, I hope somebody's out there really protecting her. She's young, yeah. she's incredibly young. She really is like maybe 20 or 21 or 22 or something, exactly, right? I exactly. forget. I certainly wasn't like that when I was 20 or 21. You know, you think you know everything, but no way was I even, you know, anywhere near as articulate as that. Not, not even like that now. But um, yeah, some, some, some <laughs> and, and, and you and you and you say that, and you're a broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> you have a wonderful show. I should tell people listening and watching. Um, you've got to tune in and it is on demand on uh, bbc.co.uk oh, yeah. forward slash sounds. But on Sundays, every Sunday um, from 6 p.m. in the UK to 8 p.m. on BBC Three Counties Radio, you can listen to Fasana. She's, Fasana is just terrific. And I love what you do. Um, you, you, you talk culturally, you, you speak about the culture of, of, of India, uh, if I oh I don't want to make sure I want to get the country correct as well. It is India, okay. correct? Is it? It's not? like the south south um uh, the South Indian uh, kind of country, South Asian country. So it's India, it's Pakistan, it's Bangladesh, it's Sri Lanka. So it's those kind of countries. So the program I guess is aimed at a BAME community. I have mm -hmm. Ed after me who's on between eight and ten, and he kind of um he caters more for the um the Black and Afro Caribbean uh, kind of community. But uh, yeah, it's really just showcasing local people. What are they doing? Local news. Um, it, it is. It's lovely because it is local radio. Um, we have quite a large uh, following, um, and and I think certainly during lockdown, a lot of people are turning to radio as well because it's just it's some noise. Um, it's a voice um, in in the in the house. But my producer always says, lovely producer um, Toby, who says, Fasana, just be yourself, be yourself. And in the beginning, I was, are you sure? Are you really sure you want me to <laughs> unleash myself? And he was like, no, 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 we just want you to be you. And when I started doing the job, I, I thought I had to be very like um, BBC um, Radio 4. So I was like, good evening, everyone. And he was like, this isn't you. This isn't you. So now, hence I say, um, what, what do I say? Hello, my gorgeous darlings or something, because yes. that is more me. <laughs> so you have to be quite authentic because people know if you're not. Um, right. So yeah, I enjoy it. I'm glad you enjoy it as well. Thank you. No, I really do. And one of the first rules of broadcasting is to be authentic, to be who you are, to be real. Um, and I'm a podcaster. I've not really, well, I've done some television, but <clears throat> that was, that was several years back with movies and things, but, um, but it is about being real and being authentic and being you and, and people do respect and gravitate to that. And uh, you tell these wonderful jokes. <laughs> I, <there's> a, <laughs> there was a Sunday, a couple of Sundays ago when you talked about waking up. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> and by the way, you are free to curse. If you want to curse or swear, okay, okay, you're free okay. to do that here. So, well, do you know, what? I mean, I grew up watching carry on films. So I kind of, you know, grew up in the 1970s. And so, so yeah, I mean, it was very politically incorrect then. So yeah, you've got to have a bit of double entendre, haven't you? <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and I remember those carry on days too. I'm right there with you with the carry ons. Um, Babs, Barbara Windsor, um, and yeah, all kinds absolutely. of people, Kenneth Williams, of course, and Sid James yeah, yeah, and yeah. the lot having a lot of fun back in the sixties and in the seventies. Exactly. Uh, it was just real fun. I just love those. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was good. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I don't know when you talk about TV, by the way, I don't know if there's anything now and I don't watch a lot of TV from afar from England. I um, mean, I, I used to, but I don't know if there's anything like carry on or anything dynamic in television anymore, whether it's carry on or something else from back then that we yeah, see now really. in England. Not really, not really. I mean, there is there is kind of observational humour and things, but I mean, Carry On was just, a, you know, in a league of its own, really, wasn't it? Just yeah. a complete league, league of its own. So there hasn't really been anything anything like that. I mean, it's everything's very PC now, isn't, isn't it? You know, for, for certain reasons, yes, good, but also um, you've got to be able to laugh at yourself as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah you do, you do. No, it's very important. Laughter and humour is a very important thing and even though even though a lot of the things i talk about in this podcast are pretty darn serious <laughs> <laughs> people oh, accuse me of not having oh I, i'm i'm very a very funny humorous person when yeah. you get to know me and i do express some of that but anyway this is not about 
how funny or not funny I am. It's about, it's just a great opportunity. We've got a few minutes to just laugh about things yeah. and just think about some of the stuff that's going on. You want to laugh at something? I mean, you know that we're having this impeachment trial, of course. Um, <laughs> this whole trial, I mean, oh my goodness. You know, I mean, let's just, let's just go right back to basics. You know, yes. it, should have, it should have ended with the bronzer, really, shouldn't it? You know, with the badly applied bronzer, with the hair, with the, just, just everything. Um, how, how, how? <laughs> I think in, in, in decades to come, when this period is, is studied, it will be, how did it happen? How did it happen? And and certainly the enablers who allowed it to happen as well. I mean, I think, is there any comeback for the Republican Party from this? Can they come back from this? Oh, I think it's over for them. I think it's been over. But you know what? In a way, um, to answer two questions that you asked, how did this happen? I think, and I've been saying it uh, on this podcast mm -hmm. for, for quite a bit, actually. I think, I think it's been going on for 100, 200 plus whatever years. Um, we have a country that was, as you know, was founded in violence, founded on yeah. violence. The US of A was founded upon violence. And, and these threads have strained throughout, especially the, since the Civil War and, mm -hmm. and after Reconstruction. Now, that has never really stopped. There's this push and pull. And the Republican Party from the 1960s to, to this very day, this is the quote unquote, I call it logical in quotes, mm -hmm. destination for where it ends up. You know, it wasn't always like this for the Republicans, of course, during enslavement days. They were the party who were the abolitionists that said, yeah. no, we yeah. don't want enslavement. The Democrats were the ones that said, no, let's do enslavement. We will. So, but as they morphed into what they morphed into with, after the Dixiecrats in the 1960s and everything else, this is their agenda and this is what they've got. Violence, uh, tax breaks for these uber rich, and the rest of you can go, you know, screw off. You know, I would exactly, have said exactly. Effort, but, you know. And just, I mean, we're just watching in terms of just the just the astronomical death rate in America at the moment from COVID. Uh, it's it's just it's out of control. And then watching the Super Bowl and just seeing those people sat in there, it seemed like a hell of a lot of people in that stadium. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you know, I just like hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on there yeah it's a mad it's it's madness and i i don't and i didn't and thankfully i didn't watch the super bowl but i i, I and i've stayed away from it for good reasons over the last well, few yeah, years i, mean, I think I'll you probably you know, know how they dealt with our brother you know that's yeah. that's i've lost a lot of respect for them and and to be honest with you maroon five as well i mean really nobody wanted to play you know that yeah. that year did they no one wanted yeah. to do a halftime show except them but they thought, no, we'll give a donation. We'll give a donation. Everything will be okay. Everyone will forget. No, I haven't forgotten. And it doesn't help that you took your shirt off either. Don't care. Don't care. You are dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's, it's just disgraceful how he was treated. I, yeah. I feel... I feel really aggrieved at that. And, you know, and then yeah. they're saying that Tom Brady, they're calling him the goat. Ah! Yeah, 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 I know. I know. Isn't that, that the, isn't that? I'm like, what the hell? What the yeah. hell? Hello, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> the MAGA, the MAGA, the, the MAGA, the MAGA quarterback, the guy that supports Trump. I mean, he's a big Trump supporter, this guy. He's a big Trump supporter. And it's just, um, I mean, look, I know, listen, he has won seven Super Bowls. I'm never going to begrudge him that on field, but he is a very disgusting, disreputable person off of it. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and Colin Kaepernick, a decent human being, lost his career. career his lost career. His career, exactly. 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 No. exactly. And the it's... way the way that he was treated. Oh, I tell you, it's so hard to not feel really, really angry and aggrieved. And, you know, I think they have lost a lot of um, a lot of fans, certainly this side. And I normally do stay up, certainly until the halftime show, um, yeah. because, yeah, you just try and force yourself to stay awake, to uh, try and avoid all the. Oh, the um, what is it? The ad breaks. Oh my lord, the ad breaks are just never ending. It's yeah. just never ending. I mean, I have a little bit of an understanding of what's actually going on on the um on the pitch or whatever you call it. Do you guys call it a pitch? Is it a pitch? Yeah. Is it a well, foul? they call it the gridiron, but it's the feet, yeah, the football field. The yeah. gridiron, the gridiron. <laughs> yeah, is that what it's called? The gridiron. Yeah, what it's the actually called that with the ship. What's there a ship there? Yeah, you know, like in the stadium. Yeah, what's that was really. 
before I stopped watching the NFL, I remember that stadium. That ship is so weird. It's this well, whole I mean, pirates thing. The Buccaneers, the pirates. It's kind of this Buccaneers as pirates thing and their logo. And then there's a ship in the background. It reminds me of tea being sunk. You know, and I'm just thinking, have they, have they got some like barrels of, of tea? Kind of like. <laughs> it's just really bizarre. And then they fire our cannons. What, what comes out of it? Is it confetti? Is it smoke? I mean, it's just really bizarre. I thought, what the hell? Yeah, they're trying to fight a war while they're playing a football game. I don't know. It's just so weird, right? It's like it's battleships bizarre. going on. I know, I know. And my, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's nice to see a little bit of eccentricity, I have to admit. But I was thinking, what the hell's going on? Is that, is that really a ship? What's, what's going on? A sailboat? Yeah. <laughs> dear, dear, I dear. tell you, I tell you, leave it, leave it to us here in the United States to do, to do. <laughs> We love to make sports with violence. I mean, some of that's very inherent. And look, I mean, in my native country and in both of our native countries, all the stuff that's going on there, we cannot leave this uh, these few minutes that we have to not and not talk about number 10 Downing Street, the COVID wow. rates where you are, where you now the highest death rate at one point in the in the entire planet, yeah, certainly exactly. in Europe. Exactly. And exactly. this chopping and changing and uh, and what's going on in the vaccine and the South Africa variant, Astra, I mean, we could go to so many places, but look at the calamity that's going on. I, I weep. Yeah, so do nation. I. So do I. So do I. Do you know, this is the third lockdown and this is a hard lockdown. Nothing is open. Nothing is open. Um, and, and this is really tough. It's tough on youngsters. It's tough on young minds. It's tough on the elderly. Um, and yeah, exactly what you said, chop and change, chop and change. There doesn't seem to be any divisive policy. Nobody's really listening to guidance from the scientists. Um, and which bit of, you know, like understanding that there is a two week delay period in your, in, in your data, does nobody understand? So you've got to be proactive. You've got to kind of slam the brakes early. And there's still people streaming through Heathrow with no tests or no checks or anything. So, um, I mean, I, so I'm doing freelancing for the BBC and weekly, I mean, they've not mandated it, but we have um, a COVID test that you do. So you don't have to do it, but you know what? Why not do it? Why not do it? So it gives you a level of assurance as well. And also the people that you're working with. It's a very small crew that's in there on Sunday, but why not? You know, a lot of the larger companies are doing that, but you know what? Mandate it, force people to do the test. I was auditing it, you know, when my when the producer told me, because um, well, once an auditor, always an auditor, and I was saying, well, how can you trace this? You know, I mean, are you not recording the serial numbers of the test kits that you've given me so you can tick them off? And he just looked at me and he said, Fazana, look, just take your auditor's hat off, you know, just cool, cool, chill, just let me know, do it on Thursday, just let me know, message me and just say that the test is okay. <laughs> You know, I'm kind of thinking, you know, this is serious. This is this is serious stuff. And yes, you're right, the South African variant, what is going to happen there? We we just don't know. We just don't know at the moment what's going to happen. It's a terrible state to be in. Um, and it's difficult. This lockdown has been incredibly challenging. It's winter, it's snowing outside, it's cold. Um, yeah, and uh, there's there's no when you can't actually visualize the end point, that's that is a little bit a little bit frustrating. Yeah, and one, and one last thing I want to, I've got to say this for the record. You talk about these lockdowns. Look what's happened in this government. But you, Dominic Cummings, you have to, they had to beg to get him out. Dominic, the other guy, Desmond Sir, Sir De I wouldn't even call him a sir. How did he get that title? Um, you don't have to comment if you don't want to, yeah, yeah. obviously. <laughs> Desmond Swain, <laughs> who appeared in blackface uh, in his political career, by the way. Oh, and... Yeah. Oh, I'm going to say that, oh, mask wearing's oppression. I mean, these people are blooming nuts. They have lost the plot. Fazana, they've lost the plot. And it's frightening. And it's as if Boris Johnson is waiting for the worst case thing and then going, oh, I had no choice but to do this. Yeah. And it's just crazy. They're dithering. And he has a, the nerve to make fun of Sakia Starmer. And exactly. talk about, oh, he's Captain Hindsight. I know, I, mean, I know. This is psychopathic. It is, it is, it is. And, and, and I think, you know what, just, just watching that chaos, and it is chaos unfold from 10 Downing Street. 
um, you know, if you feel that you had some strong leadership, some direction, you know, even a bit of empathy, et cetera, then, you know, you'd know we'd, we'd, we'd get out of this, but there, there was just nothing, you know, so today, um, uh, what was it, you know, so they've announced that there could be 10, ten year, 10 year sentences if you, if you lie about, or if you sneak into the country without doing a COVID test or if you lie about your COVID test. I mean, what, how are you going to enforce that? 10 years. So, you know, somebody who's a drink driver gets what a suspended kind of three and a half year sentence and you're just randomly coming out with 10 years. Well, I mean, what are we a dictatorship now? What's, what's going on? Where's yeah. the balance? You know, what you really want to see is some cross-party alliance. You know, yes, I know we are in, everyone says unprecedented circumstances and yes, they are, but have some cross-party alliance. You know, you've got brains in this country. You've got scientists, you've got economists. You have some cross-party alliance that you form to, in order to strategize and decide on what you're actually gonna do, what's the best for the country. But no, there's just such a, an amount of arrogance there. It's sheer, arrogance and it's killing people yeah no that that's the thing you said it very very well obviously as you always do i mean i i, I just wanted to say one last thing about that is that you've got the way it's broadcasted now the people who have lost their lives it's well within 28 days of a test and that is not the accurate barometer yeah. they're only talking about 28 days with, with with you know after you've taken a test or within that period but that is not the full death toll of people, unfortunately, and it's sad to say. I think it's a lot, lot higher than that. And it's oh, yeah, sad, and but we need to talk about that truth. And let's not treat the English public like seven-year-olds, because I think a lot of the right-wing Fleet Street media does that. And it's not fair. You go up to Scotland and you've got newspapers, at least, or the Scottish arm. They actually treat their citizenry like adults. Yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> Let's see what happens to the UK. Is the UK going to remain united? You know, that's let's. Yeah. That ain't looking very hopeful from what from where 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 we're sitting post Brexit. Yeah. That's yeah. not looking very hopeful. No, you know? very true, very true. Well, we could talk and talk and talk. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure we, you know, maybe we can get to do this again sometime. But it's just been really terrific, Fazana. Um, thank you very much for being here. Fazana is at BBC Three Counties Radio. You can find her on Sundays from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. UK time. You can also listen on repeat and on demand at bbc.co.uk forward slash sounds. That's S O U N D S. And you can get the sounds app as well on your phone. It's just so lovely to speak to you. And it's been really edifying too. It's just great to get these perspectives. Two Brits having a laugh together. Exactly. And uh, two exactly. Watford fans too. Hopefully we'll Watford really be fans. laughing. Did you see my John, Johnny Barnes? Uh, oh, my Johnny. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> oh, I miss I miss him. He's great though. You know, I met him years ago. But anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Thank you so much, Fazana. Thank, Thank you, you Fazana, for being here. Really appreciate it. Yeah, brilliant. Take care. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye.